Having discussed uh, stress and especially the gas model, the general adaptation model, uh, today we are going to talk about a concept called burnout. Now, uh, as you can see that uh, burnout uh, was uh, you know a construct which was basically uh, coined, this term was coined in 1970. So, historically if you look at it compared to the uh, other type of uh, constructs in psychology is it is uh, not so old okay. and what it actually represents is, uh, is a state of emotional exhaustion with diminished sense of personal accomplishment. So, primarily if you are experiencing burnout what you are actually experiencing uh, is a state of uh, you know, exertion where you feel that you are completely, completely, completely emotionally exhausted. And this has also to uh, know uh, associated with the concept that uh, you know have uh, know not achieved what you actually aspire to. Okay, so the the sense of accomplishment, okay, will always be uh, low. That is one. Two, uh, that. Uh, this is basically a state where you do not have a short term emotional exhaustion rather you have a long term emotional exhaustion. Okay. So, you feel that you are emotionally exhausted, but that is for a long long time. There is also a reduction in the interest uh, that gets reflected uh, you know uh, in terms of the failure of the individual okay, to use defense either at the personal front or at the work front. Okay. So, it could be something uh, know of uh, uh, personal nature, it could be something that has to do with the work front, okay. but then the person is not able to use the defenses. Okay. These defenses we have know exhaustively uh, know gone through in the past. Okay. So, here you realize there we had discussed that uh, know human beings by default have the capability of using one or the other defense in order to safeguard their ego structure. Okay. So, the integrity of the ego is never uh, put at stake because the defenses are uh, operational, but here what happens one realizes uh, that the person shows greater degree of inability in terms of utilizing those defenses okay. and you feel that you are working too much, you are overworked, but then also the fact that you are undervalued. Okay. So, now the moment you read this you basically sense that it has largely to do with workplace. Okay. So, burnout uh, know is a construct uh, which basically represents uh, know an interaction of a human being at the workplace with the situation there okay, and then experiencing this type of a state of emotional exhaustion. Okay. So, burnout will always uh, be associated with workplace. Now, if you uh, try to understand the distinction, what is the distinction between stress and burnout? Okay, in the case of a stress, one uh, still shows no over engagement. Okay, uh, in the situation, whereas in the case of burnout, one completely shows disengagement. That is the major thing. And two, <coughs> the stress of a state uh, no, also includes certain degree of hyperactivity. Okay, whereas in the case of burnout, okay, one uh, shows finally, the extreme sense of hopelessness. So, these are the two important uh, no determinants which establishes the distinction between stress and burnout. Now, what could be the causes of burnout? Okay. Uh, because it has to do with uh, work, therefore, work related issues such as lack of or losing control over the task. Okay. So, either okay, you do not have sufficient control over whatever you are supposed to do or you, you realize that initially you had a greater command over the situation, but over a period of time you have started losing it. Okay. It is further associated with the fact that if I am losing control of the situation, that means 
that others might get the credit of whatever happens at the workplace. So, even though I have put my head, I have put my effort, okay, I still do not get the credit for doing whatever the uh, is uh, accomplished, whatever is achieved at, at the work front. And third, the work environment full of expectations and pressure and you realize that the place where you are working, it is full of demands, full of pressure okay. and basically you realize that the situation that you are in, it demands more and more from you okay. and up to a certain time uh, you keep on keep on trying to uh, you know, maintain that level, but then gradually you feel you are completely exhausted. Okay. Uh, remember one thing, uh, pressure at workplace, okay. expectations at workplace, these are normal uh, no expectation at the work front. Okay. No company is going to hire you okay, saying that you know, we have no expectation, whatever you do is okay with us. The company will put forth you know, an expectation in front of you. Okay. We usually have uh, no, a feeling that usually in the government sector probably there is uh, no, no such expectation or uh, no, no such pressure, but there are uh, no, several, several, several professions where you would realize that there is there are tremendous pressure and I should rather, uh, I should rather tell you that uh, many of the decorated jobs which otherwise feels uh, no, uh, you feel that it is really a very decorated job where you keep on giving commands to other. Okay. In reality, if you look at their work, uh, work front, you would realize that they are into much more pressure. Okay. Say for example, you take the district magistrate of any place okay. and you realize oh great, very celebrated and that is the reason why there are many, many aspirants of the civil services. Okay. But if you actually realize what happens at their work front, you realize oh they are under tremendous pressure. No? There are extreme degree of expectations from you, both something which are positively oriented, things that you should not do are hence negatively oriented, but people expect you to do it. Okay. So, basically uh, I am what I am trying to say is that any work front will uh, demand certain things from you, you would certainly be put forth with a target, you would be supposed to achieve it. Okay. So, expectations might vary at the work front, but absence of expectation you cannot think of it. Okay. And similarly pressure you will certainly have it, it could be uh, you know, little higher at times, there it could be little lower at times, okay. but it is not that you will not have pressure at all. And therefore, uh, what we had discussed in the past that it is primarily your ability, how do you interpret the situation, wherever you feel you use your uh, know, different forms of defenses. Okay. In case you realize that uh, know, there are still certain uh, know, problems at hand, you can still uh, know, uh, try to go for certain strategies that can help you minimize it or handle it properly. Okay but you can still manage it and therefore, it is not that all those uh, know who work somewhere certainly become uh, know, uh, say a victim of burnout that is not true. Okay. Just like a stress we are once again coming to burnout, we are trying to look at the physical and the behavioral indicators. Physical indicators you uh, usually feel that you are uh, know completely tired and drained. Uh, I do not know if you have seen, uh, there was a very old advertisement of uh, a health drink, okay. uh, Sinkara. Have you seen this ad? Zawed Zafri you know, is just like this, it is like, like a you know, lump of cloth that if you leave it free, it will collapse on the ground. So, he is in that state okay, and there is a background narration which says no, that ye bichara kaam ki boch ka mara, okay, isko chahiye. Uh, the name of the brand comes Ka Sinkara no? and he takes you uh, know one teaspoon of Sinkara and suddenly you know there is a full of energy and starts dancing in the at the work for workplace and so forth. So, mostly you feel that you are completely tired you no? you are drained of energy. Uh, very frequently you have to apply for medical leaves, you become ill. Okay. 
uh, you have frequent uh, headaches and back sick. Headaches and back sick, you remember in the stress also this was there. Okay. Uh, change in the food habit, change in the food habit we had also discussed as part of a stress where either you under eat or over eat okay. and change in the sleep habit, this is also overlapping with the stress symptom. Okay. Behavioral indicators, you withdraw from your responsibilities. Okay. So, certain responsibilities that you are assigned to at the work front, you start withdrawing from them, okay. omitting work, uh, taking longer time to do things you prefer to remain uh, mostly in isolation and you reflect frustrations on others. Okay. So, these are uh, know the physical and the behavioral in indicators uh, that you are probably now becoming uh, susceptible to burnout or you have developed it in the full blown shape. Now, there are uh, no basically 12 phases of burnout that has been discussed, what is important is that these phases need not follow a sequence, okay. it is not at first stage 1, then stage 2, then stage 3, it could be randomly uh, no one can come to these stages. The stages are compulsion to proof, okay. so you somewhere within feel a strong urge that I have been given this task okay, and I will certainly prove my word that yes, I am the only one in the office who can do this, nobody else. Okay. <coughs> hard work, you have you put more and more effort, neglecting needs, no? remember that this is only at the work front. So, there would be several other needs that you will have to uh, know, achieve. So, you start certain, uh, you start neglecting certain needs. Uh, just uh, last week, we had a uh, uh, guest speaker who was talking about uh, know, different types of addictions and there he mentioned about uh, addiction to work what is popularly referred to as workaholics. Okay. So, he was referring to uh, some of the business tycoons okay, who happen to be his client, because he is a practicing psychiatrist uh, know, at Bangalore. So, he said that know, there are certain business tycoons who happens to be his client okay, and phases of their life where they would invest excessive time at the work front. Okay, and they would be you know busy doing certain things for their profession at the cost of many things uh, including a case where he said that the child uh, was suffering from uh, meningitis and the father still continued working in the office okay uh, did not uh, take the child to the hospital okay his uh, over engagement with the work came to the extent where the wife decided that uh, let us be separated Okay. But then these were the people who later on you know changed the whole uh, you know, face of software industry in India. Okay. So, these are interesting things you know burnout basically says that it uh, is a state where you have multiple needs and you are <coughs> developing, you are reflecting your inability to strike balance between various types of needs. Okay. If your child is suffering from meningitis. Okay, it is your responsibility to take her to the hospital okay. and of course, it is your responsibility to work uh, in your office and uh, know, meet things uh, their deadlines. Okay. But then if you compromise one because of the other that is the trick uh, know, that all of us have to play okay. and that is basically a skill know, how you uh, certain things that you underdo at time, certain things that you overdo at some time. Okay. But in the phase of burnout, one constantly reflects this tendency of neglecting certain needs. Displacement of conflicts. Okay. So, usually when you confront a conflicting situation, you have a tendency to displace it. Okay. So, displacement would be something like uh, say, uh, I, uh, I have a confrontation with her okay. and in turn I reflect that conflict in uh, my relationship with him. Okay. So, the actual source of conflict is displaced over to the relationship with somebody else. Okay. Revision of values, you start revisiting your own value system, something which is extremely difficult. No? You remember we had talked about the frame of reference, okay. we had uh, talked about you know, the uh, value assumptions okay. and uh, you know, values it is not easy to change the uh, belief value system that you are now completely endowed with. 
okay. but then in this case you start no re looking at it, re looking does not mean that it will undergo a change, but still you will revisit it. Denial of emerging problems, the problems that are now sprouting out you show you might show a tendency of overlooking them, start showing withdrawal symptoms, obvious behavioral changes, okay, changes very very apparent for others, but you do not find those changes in yourself, depersonalization. Okay. So, you have a tendency to you know dissociate things okay, and make them depersonalized inner emptiness you feel as if you are completely within uh, you are completely empty tendency of uh, developing depression and finally the full blown symptom of burnout the symptoms that we had seen right now in the previous slide okay so it has been suggested that burnout will you know follow these 12 phases okay the only difference is that unlike uh, many other types of uh, illnesses where you have the full protocol, here you will achieve these 12 stages, but it could be uh, know that it might not follow exactly the sequence in which it has been presented here. Okay. Largely it might follow in at times you will find that you know, it follows and then suddenly something else comes first. Okay. So, these are basically the phases of burnout. Having discussed uh, you know, uh, stress and burnout, we would now come to uh, perhaps an interesting thing, uh, I thought that I must certainly discuss it, uh, basically it is the self help tips. Okay. There is a long list of uh, you know, what one should do, basically the recommended strategies for handling stress and burnout, okay. but most of them are supposed to be done under a supervision. Okay. So, if you have a supervisor to look what exactly you are doing, then only you should practice those things and therefore, okay, I am putting here things where you do not need uh, know, a supervisor. Uh, for example, uh, say uh, yogic meditation for example, transcendental meditation for example. Okay. Now, they, they are supposed to really help you a lot in terms of handling your stress and burnout, okay. but then you cannot uh, know start closing your eyes and say that yes I am in transcendental meditation okay. or yoga is not only you know adopting a particular posture, it also has to do with uh, breathing regulation okay. and hence it requires supervision. So, this list has uh, things which actually does not need any supervision, one eat right Okay, and exercise. Eat right basically means that uh, you should have a pattern of consumption of food, means say approximately fixed timings, fixed is not so rigidly defined. Say for example, if 8 o'clock if you have your breakfast, okay, then you, you, can, you can prepone it or postpone it by half an hour or so, but then ensure that your breakfast time remains the same. If your lunch time is 1 o'clock, ensure that your lunch time remains the same. Problem comes when you have a variable eating habit. Sometimes you skip breakfast, sometimes you have it at 6 o'clock, sometimes you have it at 11 o'clock. Okay. Your dinner time also uh, know varies right from 8 o'clock to 3 o'clock, 3 a.m. in the morning. Okay. So, such type of things should not be done. Okay. Maintain a time frame okay, for eating uh, to Usually, this is true for the dinner timings. Know that it is always good not to have uh, no uh, spicy food in dinner, uh, not to have oily food in the dinner, okay? Because it is interrupts with your sleep cycle. No? You might feel uh, uh, no, drinking water more. If you feel drinking water more, then you have uh, more the need to go to the toilet, and this all this disturbs your sleep cycle. Okay, so that's the reason behind that. And do some type of an exercise. It could be anything. If you are interested in aerobics, do aerobics, simple walk, then go for a walk. Okay. Uh, if you hate walking, uh, and uh, but you will enjoy playing, then play whatever you do, but uh, no, physically you should certainly uh, put yourself under some type of an exercise. This helps a lot. In fact, I am not going into the scientific details of it, but you remember we had talked about the biochemical regulation of stress. 
and it has been observed that if you uh, practice the first step okay the biochemical regulation gets, starts getting affected okay so finally what you achieve is much more than what you actually uh, apparently get involved in uh, besides uh, you know eating habits and regular exercises it is also important to uh, you know maintain certain sleep pattern sleep pattern uh, maintaining sleep pattern simply means that again just like food have a consistent pattern so if you go to the bed at 9 o'clock in the night then every night you should go to the bed at 9 if you have a guest and therefore it has been postponed by half an hour or one hour that's fine okay but it's not that no whenever i feel sleepy i will go and sleep and whenever i feel waking up i'll uh, wake up you would realize that such people uh, no very early in their life become insomnia no? insomnia uh, insomnia is basically the state of sleeplessness no and many people you would find uh, know that who initially started with the fact that no i am working and whenever i'll feel sleepy i'll sleep you would realize that they are the people who i uh, know for first few days will sleep late in late in the night no so maybe 2 2 o'clock 3 o'clock it would be early in the morning okay and after 4 or 5 days suddenly after right from 6 o'clock they will start feeling uh, dizzy okay there is no beauty in having that type of a random sleep cycle there is always you know it's good to maintain a consistent pattern in fact uh, no uh, you would realize that uh, people who maintain consistency in their sleep cycle will tell you that last night even though he or she had gone late to the bed the wake up time was the same okay so even if you delay one part of it the second part you know, it becomes systematic and th these are the people who don't need uh, any alarm you know, to wake them up so they'll wake up first and switch off the alarm okay and you can compare them with people who would put the alarm sleep the alarm goes on stop it or put it in the snooze mode and again sleep okay and alarm doesn't serve any purpose for them maintaining eating have proper eating habits maintaining regular exercises maintaining your sleep cycle it really you know affects the biochemical regulation of the stress mechanism like anything importantly community involvement is also supposed to help you a lot community involvement would basically mean that you get involved in uh, work where others are involved so it's not your uh, individual uh, involvement in uh, an enterprise rather it is a group which is instrumental doing it uh, say for example i'll take a larger example of from the society and then come to a uh, a uh, smaller subset of it which has to do with your current state uh, say if uh, the society engages itself in uh, organizing some festival okay and a group of students or a group of uh, member from the society they are involved in uh, collecting the donation uh, organizing everything okay participating in the whole process okay these are considered to be great stress busters no? because uh, the whole thing that it is my target and i have to achieve it you know you personalize everything to the greatest extent okay uh, those things are not involved and hence the sense of achievement is far more the you no know, app apprehension of uh, failure is much less okay and overall because it is an involvement of a group of individuals therefore overall you even get a chance to show your interpersonal skills also while interacting with the group so community involvement has always been considered to be the best stress buster people who are involved in some certain type of religious activities for example that also is considered to be a good mechanism of handling stress okay uh, so you show certain degree of commitment every day uh, you go to the place of worship okay you surrender yourself to the god okay and that also is a very interesting stress buster no? you release yourself no all your pent up feelings gets released okay and you hold the god responsible for all the sufferings that you have 
okay. poor God cannot respond back that no, 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 I am not responsible for it. You had credited this course, all bad grades, the discredit goes to you or the instructor, I am not a party. Okay. But because God does not have this uh, you know, freedom to say so to somebody who is showing extreme degree of commitment, okay, you in turn experience great degree of solace. No? And you would realize that people who have been into such practices for long, uh, okay, uh, usually their stress level is uh, far uh, no, lower compared to people who are not involved into it. I am not recommending that you should worship one God or you should go for one type of prayer, that I am not recommending. All I am saying is that this is basically a state where you show certain degree of uh, commitment to somebody who is beyond your own self. Okay. So, when you surrender yourself to the God, to a deity, okay, it works as a stress buster. Similarly, when you involve in community activities, Okay, you do not take pride in uh, uh, accomplishing the task, rather you surrender yourself with the group goal. And therefore, whether you go into something like indi as individualized as prayer and uh, religious commitment, okay, the benefit that you get here is equivalent to the benefit that you get out of getting involved in community uh, tasks. Okay. So, uh, it uh, helps like anything. Okay. In fact, uh, no, there are uh, interesting studies uh, showing that uh, people who walk for larger causes in their life, okay, uh, they are usually not disturbed by the usual stressors that otherwise adversely affects normal human being who does not fight for bigger causes. For example, uh, say, I am an individual who is just involved into you know, his professional activities, his household responsibilities and that is it. Okay. Compare me uh, with somebody who is fighting for the independence of the country, much larger cause and you would realize that uh, you know, if you take uh, top 10 stress uh, in, uh, inducers all those 10 would uh, uh, know very seriously and adversely affect me and most of them will not at all matter for the person who is fighting a much bigger uh, cause. Okay. So, that is also an interesting thing. So, when you uh, start getting involved in community activities, usually the target that you have is usually of a higher order and therefore, the fact that uh, you know, success and failure can adversely affect you that is not going to happen for such type of things. Uh, an interesting thing uh, is what is called as self hypnosis. Hypnosis I am sure you uh, must be aware of what hypnosis is. Uh, now, in hypnosis primarily what happens is that you are made to go to a trance state okay, uh, by an expert who gives you certain instructions. Have you uh, seen an actual hypnotic session? Uh, do not give me reference of movies. No? they are not actual uh, know, hypnotic sessions that you see there. Okay. Usually, you have very uh, know, cinematic uh, <coughs> representations of hypnotic sessions in the movies, know. somebody who would do like this, somebody who would know, move a locket like this, all villain type of creatures. Know. But in the clinical setup, if you see, uh, very interestingly, know, uh, the client is made to lie down on a comfortable bed or a couch and then the uh, psychotherapist would sit there, give some instructions no, and that is it. Okay, no locket, no such you know, uh, uh, movement of the fingers and even uh, not that villain type of an appearance, here you have a uh, well dressed psychotherapist sitting in a clinic. Okay. Now, in hypnotic sessions, you are given suggestions, you follow them. Okay. And your uh, no compliance to the instructions given by the psychotherapist makes you reach a trance state. In the trance state, you are asked certain things, either the therapist would uh, seek certain information from you or the psychotherapist asks you to perform some task. Okay. Uh, for example, I will give you a session that I have seen myself. Okay. Uh, maybe 13, 14, 15 year old girl who had the problem of uh, 
convulsion, hysteric convulsions. Okay. Uh, she was made to lie down on the bed. Here was uh, an elderly psychotherapist who gave an in, gave her an instruction. Okay, uh, that uh, you will now uh, no, uh, you will now have that uh, convulsion, and she had that thing, but that on a safe place. No, so it was a bed where she was asked to have that convulsive uh, no, uh, attack and then she was given the instruction that now you are going to regain your consciousness. In, his, in uh, hypnotic sessions there is something called post hypnotic instruction, post hypnotic instruction basically is an instruction that you give to the client before he or she is made to regain her consciousness, but this instruction that you give it is supposed to be complied to after he or she has gained the consciousness. So, just before she was made to you know regain her consciousness, she was told okay, uh, that you will not be able to uh, know speak till you have a glass of water okay. and she was made to regain her uh, consciousness okay. and she kept on uh, have, uh, having this tendency to clear her throat till she was given a glass of water and then she could speak and talk to us. The primary benefit of post hypnotic instruction in such case would be you ask the client that now you will not have a convulsive attack till I ask you to have it. This means that once you regain your consciousness at any other place which could otherwise be very uh, dangerous for, uh, no, uh, for you, you would not have the convulsive attack okay. and then you will be told that fine come again uh, back to me after 15 days, again after 15 days. I make you lie down comfortably and I tell you that fine, now you will have the convulsive attack and gradually this duration, the buffer period will be gradually become uh, more and more longer. Self hypnosis is a, a similar type of a state, but with a change that you do not have an instructor telling you okay, that these are the commands that you have to follow. You, this is, there is also a word called auto suggestion. No? you keep on constantly suggesting your own self okay, and you comply to those suggestions that is the state of self hypnosis. Okay. Uh, perhaps initially when you listen to it, it's, it seems difficult uh, that one can achieve that state, uh, but if you try out it works okay. and with practice you can really achieve that state that okay, I will not do something unless I instruct myself to do it. Okay. So, that is uh, self hypnosis and that is a state okay, a little later we will associate it with something else also. Uh, that is a state where you decide that uh, no, you will not get over indulged in something okay, which in turn becomes a source of stress or burnout for you. Another important thing uh, also you know uh, is that you can develop certain special interests. No? So, if you are interested in sports, maximize your uh, interest, literature, music, dance, drama, anything everything that you are interested in, uh, no? invest more time and energy into that. And that brings me to an interesting issue, I think you, know, you can give me uh, your feedback. Uh, usually, uh, students who uh, participate in such type of activities, club activities for example. No? you have dramatics club, you have music club, you have film club, okay, different different clubs and uh, students who are more and more involved into club activities, usually their grades are also you know, relatively better compared to students who will refrain from uh, you know, participating in anything because he or she has to study. One, second dimension, in terms of placement, okay, students who have this versatility Okay. Uh, usually they get placed first and usually their uh, no overall accomplishment in terms of uh, placement indicators is also relatively better compared to if you have only and only been into studies, is that true? If it is not true you can tell me, no. second one is true, the first one is not true, you do not think so. Mm -hmm. 
first one is not true ok. Uh, I would still uh, now say that uh, the first one uh, see uh, compare a situation I am x and you are y x you know, continuously only studies and does nothing else ok gets an A y studies, but is also interested into say something like uh, sports and has invested sufficient time into uh, being into the field and participating in uh, inter IIT uh, sports and athletic competition ok, uh, has uh, no lost certain games, has won certain games, got cups at times, got medals at times, got prizes at times and finally, had to get a B ok. Now, in absolute terms if you only look at A and B and which is better you say that of course, no there is a big difference between these two according to you according to me there is not much of a difference ok. But that is you know I think a student and instructors perspective no when you say nine 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 uh, B is still 8 and A is 10. So, 8 and 10 how can you say that it is one and the same now, but in terms of uh, most of the activities of your life which actually helps you manage many many spheres you would realize uh, that your involvement in multiple tasks is still better compared to when you, you know have invested yourself in uh, unilaterally into one direction and you have achieved only and only in that direction. I will give you many examples, many examples. Last week when we had that guest speaker, we had uh, know several rounds of uh, know parties, where mostly it was uh, the doctors uh, who joined the group, okay. uh, because the guest speaker happened to be from that profession. Okay. And I could very easily uh, know sense the difference between different types of medical practitioners there a medical practitioner who joined the party somewhere around 11:45 in the night both the couples say coming and saying that oh we were we are just we have just closed the clinic to come for the party okay and somebody who says ah, 6 o'clock i had closed everything okay and 8 o'clock i am here see how you manage things is a skill okay all I am trying to say is that if you have certain special interests, okay, it still you uh, know uh, it is not the correct word to use, but still it helps you not to get completely corrupted by the unilateral type of activity that you are involved in. Okay, and uh, therefore managing a stress, you no, know, when you have multiple sources of interest, that is still better, and it serves you better compared to when you have only unilateral things to do. Uh, then there is an interesting thing uh, that has to do with vacations, okay. if you can afford to go on vacation, affordance means financially you should be able to afford it, also you should ha be able to you know, have that much time with you, quite possible that you do not have uh, you know, the liberty to uh, enjoy leave for 4 long days. Okay, and therefore, you cannot go for a vacation. Then uh, there is a, a word called mini vacations now that I have will have just few hours and that is the vacation that I will enjoy. Remember that uh, especially Europeans uh, they usually give discredit to the Indians uh, that we do not know how to enjoy vacations. No? Our work and vacation is mixed. So, even though it is a weekend what I call as a weekend I will check my mail, I will draft something, I will do something, make my slide now it is half the vacation is work. Okay. There are several countries if you have interacted with people uh, on some other side of the globe you would realize that in certain uh, look at in certain places vacation and weekend is weekend. No? 
So, if Saturday Sunday happens to be weekend, it is weekend, no? you do not even check your mail, you do not receive any official phone call, nothing. Okay. So, end of the week is really an end. Here, end of the week is something like you know either clearing of the pend up, uh, pending job or to prepare for the coming uh, week. Okay. So, we are given this discredit. There is uh, also an interesting concept in psychology what is called as mind vacations. No? Mind vacation is something like uh, you lie down comfortably, okay, close your eyes and imagine as if you have visited a place. Okay. Say for example, you could not uh, know manage to go to Kovalam, okay, because your office did not uh, give vacation to you or because of other, other constraints. But say if you can close your eyes and visualize yourself on uh, the beach at Kovalam, okay, and you can hear the sound of the sea waves, if you can hear the, uh, no, if you can uh, feel no, the pleasant feelings that you, you usually would have had, if you would have had gone to that place, that is no called mind vacation. There is an interesting technique uh, in psychology, it is used in clinics, it is called Sosnegar technique. There what happens, you have a room which is very dimly lit, no? so minimal light in the room, uh, you are made to go there and lie down and then they will play a music and the music is exactly this thing. No? So, but before uh, introducing you to such technique, the therapist would have certainly talked to you and identified what is something that you like the best. Okay. Say for example, you see that I am fascinated to you know, visiting a seashore, then I know what tape to play. You say that now forest now where you see birds okay. and in this case now you have tapes which has uh, no, no very fantastic audios, no? chirping of the birds for example, all types of birds and beautiful records. No? So, you, the therapist will just ask you to lie down, okay, relax your body. Okay, close your eyes and we'll play that tape. Okay, and uh, my experience is that at max ten minutes, and most of the people who come to the clinic would later on sleep. Okay, because you are made to lie down on a bed on the floor. Okay, so you lie down, listen, close your eyes, listen to such music for ten minutes, and you fall asleep. Okay, so that's the reason why mind vacation is also considered to be a very very effective. A technique. In fact, at places now, uh, no, uh, very very limited places where you have, uh, uh, no, oxygen clinics. If I don't know if you have heard this word. Okay, uh, if you are in the urban area where everything is very congested and you feel very bad, okay, you have insufficient uh, supply of pure oxygen in the air. Okay, now you have oxygen clinics. So, you just go there, you are made to stand in a chamber where you have the real oxygen, you breathe in, inhale and then after some time you come out. Of course, you have to pay for the service. Okay. Similarly, here also if you are going on a mind vacation in that setup, there also you have to pay for it, but then you can have it. The most economical thing would be that you can just lie down in the hostel on your bed. Okay, run the fan okay, and constantly look at it no, and look at the movement of the fan. Okay, you can blink, but then your rate of blink is slower. No? So, you gaze it, blink and then gaze it. You would realize now that it really clears off certain things from your mind. No? Now, the important ones identify goals and work uh, toward them. So, finally, you have to identify what are you trying to achieve. This would also basically mean that uh, uh, once you have certain set of goals, you are having the ability to prioritize them, what to do first. Okay. Uh, say if I have uh, left my bed little late today okay, and then therefore, I cannot come to the 8 to 9 lecture, what should I do? Should I have breakfast first or lecture first? I am not saying which is important. Okay. All I am saying is that in life you will have many such things, all that you need to do is to prioritize that this is at most important, this is important, this is also important, this is little bit important, this is okay. 
likewise if you prioritize and accordingly if you uh, know try to achieve something and compromise on achieving certain thing it is fine. Uh, it might look philosophical, but uh, the truth is that what is extremely important today okay, after certain time uh, if you would revisit your own uh, experience of those days in many cases you would feel it was silly for me to think it was important I had given so much of importance to that. Okay. So, retrospectively when you, you know visit your own uh, life experience and reflect upon it many a things usually does not appear as important as you thought of it at that point of time. Important thing incorporate humor in life difficult. Okay, but usually most of us tend to be extremely serious no? and if you smile also no, then there are plastic smiles no? you know how many millimeters this to move and that to move. Okay. But if you, you remember when we were talking about uh, the damage repair mechanisms we had talked about laughing it off. Okay. Now laughing it off is not only the very fact that you are laughing at the event but it also means that you are able to see things in a much broader perspective and you know how you know uh, unimportant or uh, know, uh, fuzzy this whole impo uh, construct of importance is woven around this type of a circumstance. Okay. So, uh, people who are otherwise know uh, very humorous in nature okay, they are very less susceptible to these things and even if they become stressed they are very easily able to manage it. And that is the reason you would realize that people who are of uh, know members of dramatics type of a thing okay, they are much easier it is e much easier for them to manage such type of a situations rather than those who are into hardcore you know, 3 to 9 labs type of a setup. Okay. And biofeedback of course, is not something that you can do it on your own, but I deliberately added something in the self help tip. Uh, I have been talking about it repeated times okay, that now there are mechanisms uh, to show you okay, visually okay, how your entire body system is functioning. So, something that we had uh, you uh, studied as a part of the autonomic nervous system okay, uh, saying that no these things uh, we do not have a voluntary control over them. Okay. Now, you have technology available to visually show you how these involuntary tasks are being performed. Okay. And biofeedback is a technique where sensors are attached to your body, you are in a whatever state you are okay. and then you can see how your bodily uh, functions uh, actually functions whether uh, it is in a hyper state in a, at a hypo state and then you are told that see you know this is how it should have been the standard template okay. and then you just look at the screen and uh, you instruct yourself come down, come down, come down, come down just like hip, uh, self hypnosis part of it. You give suggestion to yourself you look at it and you would realize that within few minutes there are changes no? and if you keep on keep on practicing it for little duration periodic sessions you would realize that you gradually develop that tendency to have control over yourself. And therefore, all the physical changes that we had talked about with respect to both stress and burnout, you are able to manage a good part of it. So, when it says you know that heartbeat increases, pulse rate increases, breathing increases, perspiration increases, okay, GSR increases, and you say, Oh, come on, I have seen all of this many a times. No, I am well trained, so I will tell my heart slow down here, there is no point, no beating faster and I will have a control over it okay. because I can control x therefore, all x 1, x 2, x 3 the factors which are dependent on this I will also have certain degree of control over it. Okay. So, uh, this is these are uh, the interesting uh, techniques I thought uh, before we uh, know close the chapter on stress and burnout because it was heavily loaded with problems and symptoms and nothing more therefore, I thought we will end up with this. Tomorrow uh, when we meet we will be starting with uh, another construct what is called as post traumatic stress.